And then with the slaughterhouse, um, a lot of people had, you know, very different reactions for it. I remember at the time, mm -hmm. and, and we've also talked about, but why do you think that that album had such a visceral reaction from people? Um, because it was a really, really dark album. The production was, was really, really dusty, um, not crisp. Mm -hmm. And at that same time, um, Dre dropped Chronic. And so his joint was like the most crystal clear, loudest, <laughs> perfectly EQ'd sounding album ever. And it blew up on both coasts at the same time. Like everybody was playing it in every car. You drive by and you hear those crisp hi-hats, those loud snares. The, the singing was like way on top. All the vocals were way on top. My stuff was like really, really dark, really muted. It had a vibe, but it wasn't that crystal clear, radio friendly sounding uh, EQ, EQ'd stuff. Cause we didn't know what we were doing yet. Like this mm -hmm. was like fresh from Marley, <laughs> going into a studio now going, okay, you're on your own, figure it out, make an album. And I'm turning knobs, I'm trying to do what Marley did, but it ain't sounding the same. But mm -hmm. we still did a really cool record that uh, was a cult record. Um, the fans who, who love Slaughterhouse love it. And to this day, they think it's my best work, even though I'll tell you myself it's not. <laughs> but, um, you know, it was a time period. It was 93, there was a lot going on, and uh, it, was a lot, it was a lot to compete against. Right, okay. And, and that, Obviously, you took um, at times satirical, at times very forceful look at what was going on in rap and right. a lot of the, the gangster imagery and stuff. So for you to do that and it was most associated with the West Coast other than, or obviously a lot of the East Coast artists were doing similar things similar at the same stuff, time. Yep. So what was the juxtaposition of making that and then when you realized later that with Born to Roll, right after that, people thought you were from the West Coast. Yeah, or... it, was such, it was very, very, very weird. Hard to explain, really. Like, you know, I do this parody um, called Slaughterhouse. I got guys wearing, wearing Raiders hats and Jerry Curl wigs and Lokes on the shades. And it looks like I'm really poking fun at the West Coast, um, which I kind of wasn't, but it was just more, there was, you know, I thought NWA was dope, but I thought there was like so many copycat groups that tried to basically chase the exact same concept that they were doing. Right. And, and at that time, that's all labels was trying to sign was, if you sound like NWA and you dress like them, we're going to sign you. <laughs> and I, it just, it, it, was, it was just annoying to me. I'm just as a fan looking at it, this is annoying. Let me, let me, let me poke fun at it a little bit. So I, I did what I did. And, um, you know, it wasn't to go at a coast or go, to, go at a genre, it was just to go at what was happening in the industry. And so that it was taken how it was taken. And then, but then look what happens, what? A couple of years later, um, I got one of the, well, really my biggest record right. um, of my, of my of commercially, my biggest record uh, blows up. And the first place it blows up, West Coast. The Bay and then LA. And then what was it, um, being that it was your biggest song uh, on every level, what was it like to have that first experience of having that kind of getting on the way to stardom and that, that overwhelming appreciation for your stuff, not in New York. It was weird because most of the people on the West Coast didn't know anything about me before Born to Roll. Okay. And so I remember doing an interview in, um, at Z90 in San Diego and I, I walk into the radio station, it's a big radio station and you know, when one of those stations with the guys is talking super fast. Yeah, next up we got, oh, we got Mass Age coming in. Hey, Born to Roll. Yeah, yeah. And then he's like, so tell me, uh, what's it feel like to have your first record out? I'm like, yo, what are you talking about? I got, I got two albums before this. Right. He's like, oh, okay, well, here we go. Here's Born to Roll, Mass Age, boom. Like, he <laughs> totally didn't know anything about me interviewing me, but that was kind of like what the experience was like. Um, in the early goings because mm -hmm. people were learning, they were finding out through interviews, through reading, you know, magazines, like, oh, so he's been out before. Oh, so he was down with Marley and Kent. Oh, that's the same guy from Symphony? Oh, I didn't know that. I thought he was from I thought he was from LA. Like, so there was a learning curve for the fans and they eventually figured it out and you know, we're good now. Okay. And then um, by the time we get moving into the next phase of your career, post delicious vinyl you became 
kind of more synonymous with having the conceptual albums, which we see again on disposable arts. Yeah. So what what was it and what is it about you that made you gravitate to having these conceptual projects? I just think I'm a writer at heart. I, th I really believe that I'm a writer at heart, a creative writer who wants to tell stories, whether it's through rap or some other way. Um, so I tell, I tell stories through my music, but then I also tell stories through the interludes of my, of my music. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just something in me, it's, it's innate. It, 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 I need to do it. It's, it's the only way that I feel like I'm having a good time creating music is when I'm telling a story within a story. And so that's why from really, from, from Slaughterhouse all the way through, I've been getting better and better at it and, and telling a better story and a more cohesive story and a story with more clearer. Then, then I started to add actual, you know, characters that, that, that you could follow from one project to the next. Right. Um, and, and, and so that's where it, it, it was all on a road to where I am now, which is I'm writing a, a musical for, for, for the stage. I'm, I'm, I'm writing a screenplay. I'm writing a, a TV pilot. I have all of these, you know, writing projects that are on my computer that are now coming to fruition. And then how do you, what do you get differently out of writing a song versus screenplay or a play or a commercial or something? It's real different, man. Um, you know, writing lyrics, a story in, a, in rhyme form, that comes supernaturally to me. Um, it's really about just kind of being slick with the wordplay, being slick with the, you know, way you lay out the, 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 the song and you, surprise ending, however you want to do the verse. But when you're writing a, a bigger a bigger piece of material the rewrite is crazy like i i find myself changing stuff every step of the way um because you're like this could this could sound better i this should so i'm realizing that it's a longer play and so that's that takes a that's, that takes adjusting because i'm so used to you know 16 bars 24 bars fix a couple of lines, I don't like how I said that, let me change that, and then it's done. Whereas writing something that's a longer piece, it might take months mm -hmm. to, write a, to, to write that. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm learning that and I'm in the middle of doing that now. I'm, I'm in the midst of it and I'm learning as I go. In the beginning, hip hop was ruled by the East Coast. Then the West Coast rose to prominence, thanks to gangster rap. Straight out of Compton, crazy motherfucker name Hip hop changed the world. Gangster rap changed the narrative. I'm representing for the gangsters all across the world. And then changed the world again. Cause I'll come and take your life away. The history of gangster rap features unheard stories, unseen photos and documents, all with exclusive interviews from the founders and players who shaped gangster rap. I think a real gangster rapper has to scare you a little bit. The history of gangster rap written by veteran rap journalist Soren Baker. In stores now. Yo, what up? This is DJ Quick. Be sure to pick up my homeboy Soren Baker's book, The History of Gangster Rap, if you really want to know what we do.